to the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness because we have rebelled against him and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God by following his laws which he set before us. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. You will find the confession printed on page 79 in the Book of Common Prayer. Most merciful God, God we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 25, Ad Te Domini Lavavi, appearing on page 614 of the Book of Common Prayer. We will recite verses 1 through 9 of Psalm 25, responsively by half verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord. And teach me your paths. Lead me in, the, in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. For they are from everlasting. 
Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right. And teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness. To those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is a sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in person, who in former times did not obey, 
when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefig prefigured, now saves you. Not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news, the gospel of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. So here we are on the first Sunday in Lent. And I have, for many years, I have found the juxtaposition of those words of Jesus to be um, odd. They bring me up short. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of heaven has come near, followed by repent and believe the good news. I have come to the conclusion that we in our day are no different than the people in Jesus' day. We all know what sells news. Tragedy, violence, bad news, however you want to think of it. Bad news is what sells newspapers. It's what sells clicks online. Bad news is a source of money in our culture. And bad news loves to get passed on from person to person. Sometimes it's called gossip. But Jesus says that bad news is not what he's about. Bad news is not the reality that he has come to proclaim. He says the time is fulfilled. The time of which God throughout Hebrew scriptures has pointed to in the voices of the prophets that the day would come when God himself would come to earth, when God himself would lead the people, when God himself would transform the hearts of human beings, and when war would be no more when people would sit in peace beneath their own vines and fig trees. The promise of a time when the world, with all its bad news, would be transformed and there would be a new heaven and a new earth. And this promise of God runs throughout the Jewish scriptures. And Jesus says, and now we're thinking 2,000 years ago, Jesus says, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of heaven has come near. In some translations, what he says is, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's right here. You can grab it. It's that close to you. It is here. It is now. The kingdom of heaven is here. Repent and believe the good news. I don't know about you, but in my, well, 60 plus years of life, there have been many times when the world has gone through great upheavals, when our country has gone through great upheavals. And it is very easy in those times to be discouraged, to believe that nothing will ever change, nothing will ever get better, that, um, well, human beings are what we are. But that's not part of God's plan for this world. It's not part of God's plan for humanity. It's not part of God's plan for each one of us. When Jesus took on our humanity in his birth, and in his life, he showed us what it looks like for a human being to be filled with the Spirit of God and to live from that place of the divine heart of love. And when that human, fully human, fully divine Jesus was willing to be put to death on the cross, that sinfulness, that is something that has infected humanity down through the ages. That sinfulness was put to death. And in his resurrection, we have the new creation that God promises us in the person of the risen Jesus Christ. 
And as Paul points us toward our own baptism, our joining with Christ, our becoming one with him in his death and in his resurrection, in that moment, the transformation process begins in us. We become, if you will, a kind of viral presence of the Holy Spirit on this earth. And in our daily lives, we proclaim the good news that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, on Ash Wednesday, the um, passage from Isaiah talked about, about who we are called to be. The people of Israel are called to be this. We are called to be this. We are called to be repairers of the breach, builders of cities to live in. We who follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, are called to be transformers, catalysts for transformation in this world. That, as Jesus says, the kingdom of God may be proclaimed everywhere. After his baptism, he spent time in much prayer, in much reflection, self-examination, um, the gospel refers to it as temptations, all the things that pull at us, at our humanity. And emerging out of that time, he goes to his own hometown. He begins locally, if you will, to proclaim that the kingdom of God is here. And that's what we are called to do in our lives as well. And it requires one thing. It requires a kind of humility of mind and heart, a willingness to lay ourselves open before the living God, to accept the reality, the good news, that God lives within us and longs to be at work in us and through us to complete the work of transformation that God has promised to bring about in this world. That seems impossible. And yet, how do you feel when you see a rainbow in the sky? How do you feel when you see a double rainbow in the sky? Whether you, uh, whether you are a Christian or not, uh, whatever you think about that story of Noah and the ark and the rainbow afterwards, a smile comes to my face when I see a rainbow. And I have seen scores of cars pull off to the shoulder of the road and people get out of their cars to stand and just look, especially at the phenomenon of a double rainbow. We can explain what causes a rainbow scientifically and yet there's always something that is grace-filled about being in the right time at the right place and seeing a rainbow. Our lives are grace-filled. We are to be that moment of grace in other people's lives. We are to be sources of joy and transformation, reassurance of the truth of God's promise that in him and through him, all things will be made new and all will be made well. So if you find yourself sliding into a place of despair about the darkness that does exist about us in this world, remember Jesus' words. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. It's right here within reach. It's at hand. Repent and believe the good news. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to join with us in the Apostles' Creed, found on page 96 in the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was, was crucified, died, and was buried. buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and, and the life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. evil. For, For thine, thine is the kingdom. kingdom. <laughs> you know what? Power. Let's just start the Lord's Prayer over again. Yeah. I had it silenced. Hmm. But something got joggled. It happens. Some, something did. That's all right. It's an easy place to pick up on. <sighs> Just thinking if there's some other way to deal with this, because it was silenced. Oh, hmm. Uh, can you just put the volume record. all the way down? Yeah, I have the volume down. Oh. I have the ringer off, silenced. Oh, oh that's weird. But, okay, let's just start with okay, the... Okay, uh, well, hopefully it wasn't anything urgent. The Lord be with you, and we'll get going. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The prayers of the people this morning are in Form 3, appearing on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer, page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that Deborah Brown, Meg Burgess, J.C. and Helen Butler, Bill, Cynthia, Elise, William, and Hudson Champ, and every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those for whom continuing prayer has been requested, including Ron Mishko and family, Suzanne and family, Theodora DeBaz, Fran Myers and family, Sam Aubel, Dennis Curt and family, Liz Russo, Tom, Roland Devere II, Robert and Jean Wallace, Peter and Sandy Bowser, Janet, Yuri McElliott and family, Jody and Juan, Brian Flory, Andy and family, and for all who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to Jerry Lolf, Tim Scott, and all the departed eternal rest let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Next Sunday, February 28th, um, we will post a worship service as always, but February 28th is also the annual meeting for St. Christopher's by the River. And I invite you to watch your email. You will, in your Thursday news and notes, receive information about how to sign up to attend uh, annual meeting. There will be um, a flock note sign up as we were doing when we were worshiping together in person. We are asking you to make a reservation for annual meeting. This is so that we can know in advance that we will have a quorum present. So we ask you to, through flock note, indicate whether you, it, that you will be at annual meeting uh, and whether it's you or you and a spouse, you and another family member, whatever the case, just like you used to sign up for in-person services using Flocknote, we ask you to do the same thing for annual meeting on February 28th. The annual meeting will begin at 10 o'clock that morning, and there will be a button that will function as a link in your Thursday news and notes that will allow you on February 28th at 10 o'clock, click on that link and you will automatically enter uh, the annual meeting. And once everyone has arrived, um, we'll begin. It's gonna be a different than any other annual meeting that we've had, but um, golly, we've had almost a year now to um, stretch our wings, to learn new ways of doing things, and I have full confidence that um, together we can make this work. So annual meeting next Sunday, February 28th, 10 a.m. Please be sure to reserve and then click on your link to enter the meeting. Thank you. 
using the general thanksgiving on page 101. Let us pray. Almighty God, God Father, Father of all mercies, mercies we, we, your unworthy servants, servants give, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we, we may show, show forth your praise, not, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.